back on our show this uh, Thursday morning. Always fun to have Craig McCain with us from the Farm Service Agency. Craig, welcome. Good to have you. Hey, always great to be here. Craig, you had so much information. We started the com interview before the <laughs> cameras started rolling today. Well, that was nice of you to call it information because <laughs> many people don't think it's information. <laughs> think it's so good information. I appreciate You're that. You're so welcome. All right, Craig, we're going to start with fruits and vegetables. Uh, hey, it's prime time. Yep, uh, sure you is. know, encourage folks if, if you're interested, certainly. You know, we, in this country, we have a lot of fruit and vegetables available on a, on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, through the commercial markets yeah. and the supermarkets. And, but, you know, in recent years, there's, there's uh, been a lot of emphasis on local grown, uh, tying customers back to, if you will, the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, farmers markets. Yeah. And um, so it's just encouragement that, that people would take advantage of those opportunities because certainly with our climate, uh, you know, there's a narrow window mm -hmm. of time in the year in which we can produce optimally uh, fruits and vegetables. And, and we're in that window, you know, May and June, they're really prime months. Before so. it gets too hot in July and August. Absolutely. I mean, plants are just like uh, people, you know, you start getting in that 100 degree range during the day and uh -huh. then in the 80s at night they're under a lot of stress. Okay, so, you said optimal. Now explain to me what can we do to have optimal plants uh, because I, <coughs> to avoid the, the fungus and the other um, challenges that we get with this humidity. Well, it, it's, it's tough to answer because first of all, you need to know your plants. Okay. Uh, some plants have a natural immunity. Some plants are way more tolerant than others. But <clears throat> what I'd encourage you to do is use the resources available, certainly LSU Ag Center, okay. the Southern Ag Center. There, there are university yeah. uh, ag centers that have information available to the public either in printed stage from our local county agents or online. Uh, we're in a society where information is at our fingertips. Okay. Learn about the plants and then learn about the products. There are many, many, many products available out there through your local lawn and garden dealers. And, and it's basically understand the plant and I have a plan because what traditionally happens is once you see the damage, many times it's too late. That's yeah. exactly what happens. Everything's looking good, it's blooming, then all of a sudden it turns yellow and it dies off that, the vine. And, and th those are typically plant diseases and right. in many cases they're preventable, sometimes they're not. But it's, it's really start early, have a plan, understand which plants are susceptible, and it's an educational yeah. thing. Well, thank you. I've learned tonight, today from this. Craig, you wanted to update us on a couple of programs? Well, just, just you know, where we're at, Mark. We, yep. we had a really rough sp spring with sure the did. amount of rain we had, historic flooding. Frankly, we went into about four or five weeks of dry weather mm -hmm. where we didn't get rainfall, and we began to, we, we did a lot of field work. And so, you know, Farmers are at the point where they're basically through planting. We're not through statewide, but I looked yesterday, the, the soybean crop, for example, yeah. which is the crop that we plant latest. Mm -hmm. It's the latest planted crop traditionally in the state of Louisiana. We're 93% through with that crop statewide, which is ahead of the five-year average. Yeah. Now, four weeks ago, we weren't even close. So producers have made a tremendous uh, amount of progress, and all, in all honesty, except for the areas that suffered flooding, our crops look really good. good. So what we want to encourage producers to do and, and landowners to do is make your necessary plans to report your acres, mm -hmm. to tend to the business side of farming, okay? The field work's primarily done at least for uh, a period of time until we get into the midsummer management and harvest. Yeah. Now it's time to focus on the business. So uh, make sure you talk to your local NRCS, Farm Service Agency, the different people you deal with, Now's a prime time to do it, and there are some program deadlines. And you said business, tend, tend to your business. What is the best website to learn? Uh, well, depending upon the path you're going to take, that's hard. To, that's also hard to define, yeah. but uh, you can start with USDA.gov, okay. which will take you to any of the USDA sure. agencies, depending upon where your business and your particular farm or your particular needs. Uh, you certainly can, can also go to the Ag Center website. Mm -hmm. Both LSU and Southern have a have availability of websites and you can contact us at the local farm service agency office and we can direct you to many of those resources. Right. So. That's what Craig's here for. Well, hey. We thank you. We sure learned a lot from you today. Well, thank thank you, you so much for being a great resource. Thank you. Running out of time Craig but I wanted to ask you quickly, quickly, corn crop? Really good in some places, really young in others. There you go. Maybe in the same field. Hmm. Sums so, it up. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see how the summer plays out. Thanks Craig. Okay. Thank More you. to come. Stay with us on this Thursday.